Assalamualaikum and hello YouTube. My name is Nur Muhammad and I'm back with another watch review. So this time around it is the Seiko um, Speed Timer or much more, much more commonly known as the Seiko um, Bullhead Chronograph or <laughs> something like that. I think so. Anyway, oh yeah, let's before that let's do a quick swatch. Check today I am wearing the. Zodiac C Super C Dragon, which has, which is also part of the three pieces uh, of the watches that has been lent to in to me by Mr. Eric. Yes, I've done a review for this particular piece, so uh, please go ahead and check out the video for this watch as well. Okay, so let's uh, get into the watch itself. So the dimensions, right? The dimension is um, this is a from here the di a diameter of uh, forty three point eight, or yeah, let's call it forty four. And from luck to luck is 46 millimeters, which is surprisingly much smaller than my um, Citizen NY0040. So yeah, that's 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 really cool. Huh? And we have the thickness of about 15 millimeters, which is from here from here to here, right? So yes, uh, what do I think about this watch? Man, how cool is that? Oh, I forgot. This is also called uh, the dial is called as a kakume kakume which means a uh, square eyes so we have this a bit squarish eyes because of this um, um dial, not not dial uh what do you call this oh come on man <laughs> what doesn't come out ah, come on you, okay, you know what just just, just call it eyes so this is a six uh, seiko speed timer 6138 bullhead Kakume, right? So full damn long name for that matter. So anyway, this is a legendary watch. Uh, this is made in um, March 1978, which is unfortunately not my birth year. I was born in 1976. So the full model name is Seiko 6138, uh, what was it? Uh, 0031 uh, because of this uh, I think the 6138 is the movement inside the watch itself. Okay, so I'm not a, a, a great uh, Seiko vintage expert, so but that is how I think that is how it was uh, called the bullhead uh, Kakume. Right, so um, it features a multiple finishing case. I think, I think, I think, you know what? I say I think because of you can see here. Obviously, we have a wee bit of polishing, maybe a bit of over polishing. I might, I might suggest. So you know what? Let's just if the the camera has a hard time focusing today. Come on, right? So yes, we can see that there is a bit of over polishing here. You can because this line is uh, not that sharp anymore. And as a contrast, this side is uh, has has still has much much. Uh, sharper lines over here so yeah i believe this surface was originally polished and this surface was originally brushed right so but now because it has been polished altogether it doesn't really have that you know what um, that huge difference between this side and this side so yeah that kind of sucks you know and anyway so <laughs> let's get to that part so we have this multiple finishing a unique case style over here you can see that this part is uh, much thicker compared to this part. So uh, uh, this that is obviously to you know what to accommodate this uh, pusher pushers which is on this corner of chronograph pushers which is, sits on top of this uh, on top of the watch itself, right? So the dial the dial features a brown dial which with a um, gold. Uh, yeah, now I remember. This is the 30 minute register, 30 minutes and 60 minutes register, and this is the hour register. So yes, now <laughs> I remember. And the crystal, you know what? It feels like sapphire, but I don't think it is sapphire because you can see that there is a slight tiny hair line scratches there here and there so i don't think that is a sapphire and we have a fixed tachymeter bezel here which unfortunately i i don't know how to use it maybe it is uh, used to time speed or lightning speed or car speed or whatever so yeah but you know what we just like these things for the designs right all right so yeah um on top so what are the other complications other than the chronograph so we have this day and date right and 
and pretty much nothing else <laughs> sorry about that so we have this applied indices here which unfortunately are not loom you know what it is i don't know what was seiko's uh, seiko designers thinking that at, at in 1978 but why wouldn't they loom this this indices and why would they loom this you uh, know this uh, uh mint hand and our hands because you know what it would give the watch much 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 better legibility in the dark right so yeah that's kind of shame anyway um let's check out the oh so it is not set to the correct time uh, or correct date now so let's see how we set it so we have this little bit uh anyway so there's no sign crown here right so you have to it's really quite difficult to access so you can see that there is a there is an there is a you know what a groove for our finger our fingers to get in so but from this side it's quite impossible so you have to you have to have a quite a, a longer fingernail to fit that in and boom you can adjust the dates so which is 17 today and you can adjust the day which yes comes in kanji wow yay thank you <laughs> right so i'm gonna set it to today which is on this is sunday on monday yes that's gets yobi hello gets yobi and gonna have to wind it to give it some power all right so you can't obviously this this thing doesn't have any second hand so you can't really know whether it is you know what it is uh moving or not but still when you push it push it out further you set it to the current time which is 9.25 like so and boom we're done right so to test out the chron to start out the start the chronographs you have to push this button here and there's a move <laughs> oh my god yes you have to do that shaky shaky thing and to give it a, feel, a bit of juice or you can just hand wind it to give it more power maybe you can hear the sound quite smooth huh? for a watch that is 40 years old it's still quite smooth to be honest with you right so uh, we let that thing this chronograph hand runs for a while before I show you how to reset it alright so let's check out the case back the case back features you know a simple a typical screw down case back I don't really it mentioned here Seiko water resistance that is the um, serial number down there we have stainless steel 3 uh, 61380031 and I don't really think it is a water resistant watch anymore because of just because of the of the you know of the 40 years um, 40 years uh, old <laughs> uh, watch design it, it's definitely not going to be um, water resistant anymore right so yeah I forgot to show you what uh, it came on this superb and nice looking um, Hirsch rubber Hirsch uh, rubber strap original rubber strap you can see that there is a branding H down there and another H plus down here so I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to ruin it by using it so yes I've take it off but it is really, really nice you mentioned here 20 millimeters Hirsch pure pure Kau took uh, how the heck I can spell that Kau took <laughs> alright so pretty nice but yes I I I think that this style of um, you know what um, racing style leather strap suits the watch much better so yeah you can see that this is a kind of cheap uh, strap from cheapersnatalstrap.com you can see that this uh, keeper has been you know what as you know what it it sucks you know anyway the, this leather is nice but the keeper sucks anyway so yeah it kind of give it a much much more racing racing look to it i think yeah it, it's really cool right so let's put it on my 6.75 inch wrist like so okay Oh come on, man! Uh, okay, so this that keeper. I'm gonna kill that keeper. I'm gonna take it off. It's really, really annoying. <laughs> okay, right. So, and you put it on your wrist. It's not really that bad, right? So not really that bad. So not really that heavy at all, uh, despite the huge size. But the thing that uh, I I notice when I whenever I wear this watch is because of the angle of the watch. So you can't really see this side of the strap, right? So you are. It, if you are wearing this watch so you can see both sides of the strap this one and this one but because of the shape it's difficult for you to to see this this side of the strap which is kind of weird because i have i have to look 
more to this side of the strap so yeah it's kind of weird but yeah it's manageable so not really that bad right oh i forgot to i forgot to you know what to give it a weight check so let's fire up the um, the uh, what they call this the scale <laughs> all right let's see how how heavy it is right so on this leather strap it is about um oh come on man come on mr light what the heck oh it's 107 uh, grams so not really that heavy but still it's quite uh, heavy for just a single block of <laughs> metal such as this and yeah all in all um what do you think on this watch um you know what this is a really cool watch i you, you can't deny it so it has appeal it has um that history that uh, that is similar to the um, um what do you call that seiko poke poke or something same movement uh, same you know what same case shape uh, no no not same case shape but definitely a legendary as well um but do i think i want to own it do i think i want to buy it off from eric uh, no <laughs> so sorry eric. it doesn't mean that i don't like this watch i really do but still it's not my style and you know what it's just way too big for me so anyway so let's see how the current graph stop and you can see here um you uh, we have recorded up until four minutes of time and you can see that on this let's see if i can move that away you can see that this uh, our hand is still uh, no our our register is recording a few uh, time four minutes as well so it is moving right so when you stop it and you see push the reset, reset button boom that's really nice okay so shame i can't see the movement i would really really love to see the movement because i think it would, it would look it would look great so but yeah i don't really want to you know what so destroy someone else's um near to one thousand dollars watch right so when eric bought it he mentioned that it was nowhere nowhere near one thousand dollars but now this thing has been valued if you search for this on ebay it will uh, creep out to maybe one thousand dollars in you know what maybe a few years time so he said that he's gonna keep it until he thinks it's 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 worth it to sell it to someone else so yeah this one is one piece that you could buy now and make profit year later in the future so that how cool is that so that <laughs> so yes uh, conclusion cool watch not for me but maybe for you so if you guys love this video please go ahead oh sorry if you guys have any um seiko speed timer uh bulldog kakume please go ahead and give me your user experience or your thoughts of this watch in the comment section below um if you guys want if you guys love this video please go ahead and give a thumbs up i'm reaching uh, 2000 so 1000 subscribers maybe in one week so please go ahead and please subscribe to my channel and of course uh, click the uh, bell button so that you won't miss any of my future videos all right so until next time take care i'll see you soon Bye bye